what up traders what up investors can here from dyslexic investor and we're gonna be looking in diving into a better trying to placing and start putting the puzzle pieces together on this whole margin call on what really happened here uh and i found some really great clips uh via the youtube from uh from bloomberg and then cnbc kind of like going to be cutting uh things uh around this to really kind of present the data here and really what happened here and if, if you don't have the patience, like I don't really have a lot of times and really looking at the nitty gritty of stuff, basically it's an individual who potentially lied uh, on what leverage she had to the various banks or the banks that it took, didn't do their due diligence. Uh, and then this individual got a excess amount of capital and the leverage up the wazoo. Again, what, if you're not familiar with leverages, mostly uh, highly liquid accounts and trading accounts have margin or leverage as the people call it. You can lever up some extreme cases of like five to seven, but in some cases, 10 to 15, 20 times your position. And we're gonna be looking at the swaps that this individual person did uh, via the second video. But yeah, so that's, we're gonna be looking at again, sadly, another, Oops, didn't know that could happen uh, in the markets. Of course, uh, <laughs> there's always a, 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 a snake in the bushes to try to get uh, uh, figure out um, how big they can inflate the balloon until it blows up. And this is really coming down to this uh, capital thing. So let's go ahead and play the quick lever to kind margin, of the huge, play this huge uh, sense here. Uh, but not for long. What's going on here? It's very interesting. We have to really go back to who Bill Bong is. He was a oh, someone seen as a bright and talented uh, breakout analyst, uh, Julian Robertson's tiger back in the day. This was back in the 1990s. Set out to uh, start his own fund. So th this Bill, I don't, I can't pronounce his last name because I'm terrible. Hwang um, is the founder and CEO. Again, as you can see here, uh, who really. Uh, was behind the block trades, as you can see in the sub the, the titles up here as well. So, <laughs> which was Tiger Asia, so therefore got the uh, title of Tiger Cub. But sometime in 2012, he was dinged by authorities across continents in the U.S. and in Asia for insider trading charges. Uh, the firm actually copped to a uh, charge of wire fraud and uh, had to return all outside money and became a family office. And and that really was what became Archigo's capital management. Uh, in the last few years, since that uh, setback, that family office has grown into a big force. When senior Goldman executives wanted to do business with this firm because they were seeing that Archigo's was throwing out a lot of commission and interest to uh, rival dealers, Goldman compliance would not let them do business. You know, these are all the stocks, again, that we saw those blocks at, um, everything from Baidu, uh, vape shop, Tencent, of course, Discovery and Viacom really just getting blown out of the water on Friday with, again, those block trades. What block trades are is basically uh, large orders that institutionals are willing to buy or sell or trying to get rid of things. So block orders, like they're like, hey, we know that the daily volume for this stock is only like 10 million shares but we need to sell 35 million so we can do a block order at 5 million or 10 million at this price and they can kind of negotiate it with that which again i understand the point of block orders but like it's not like the most rudimentarily fair sense of uh the the, the state of the market honestly yeah. Something changed in the last couple of years. Because you can see, again, Discovery has been running up like a, a rocket ship. We'll look at that stock here in a second. But it is absolutely insane to see what we're seeing in the market again. You're There is no, where's the regulators at? Are, are they asleep at the wheel again? Like, it, it seems like there isn't like the regulators would talk about like, oh, we, we secured the banks, da, 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 da. but now, it's coming down to the fruition of like, you know what, the banks are maybe, again, I'm not giving them a pass, but are doing the right thing. 
but now it's kind of going towards the person or the f larger funds, and they are potentially trying to create this uh, uh, manipulation, especially in the hedge funds, because of its, its very competitive businesses and so forth. We're getting more and more information if this individual did not disclose to Goldman or Credit Suisse or whatever company that they were buying these swaps from and being able to get leverage from their prime brokers, meaning I can get more leverage, I can buy more and more and more uh, and just can continue to eat. Goldman has now gone from blacklisting him to becoming one of his biggest uh, financiers, and that is what has landed them in the center, in the nexus of this margin mayhem that has played out over the last few days. Again, Goldman, again, the guy has been criticized for insider trading 2012. Kind of went quiet, closed his larger fund down, then created a family fund, which again, it's very loosely worded. Uh, family fund was basically you could uh, trade a nest egg or a family's fortune, um, but it clearly sounds that that grew pretty large as well, um, and then really got attentions from the greedy banks and like, oh, look at this Joe Schmo over here. I don't care what he's done in the past, Let's just give him money because we can get a lot of commissions from him. So that's a little no likey that. Uh, and then let's go up to the CNBC side on the understanding of the process of the prime brokers uh, like we were talking about. And, you know, it's funny. Literally on the plane, 7 a.m., my phone started to light up with uh, calls from people saying there's some very strange block trades. Now, that wasn't yet Viacom and Discovery, which, of course, as we know, are sort of at the center of this, but it was a, any of these other names. Baidu, you mentioned Tencent. You heard Dom mentioning at the end of, of Squawk Box. Block after block, and people starting to wonder what was going on as Friday went yeah. along. Of course, we started to see those enormous blocks, both Discovery and Viacom. We have all three of us sat there and talked endlessly, as you know, over these last few months about the enormous move up in both Viacom and Discovery, in particular, two companies that I happen to know very well, far beyond what many at least had anticipated would be the fundamental strength of these companies, even with counting for their success so far, if you want to call it that, in direct-to-consumer. And now we have an answer as to what was going on, but we have an awful lot of questions still in terms of how this was allowed to happen. And if I could just back up for a minute and try to explain to our viewers, what are we talking about? Well, it does appear that Archegos, this family office slash hedge fund, whatever you want to actually term it. Uh so that's what we just talked about again. He's saying like, hey, it's a family fund, whatever. He's basically saying it's BS, like whatever family fund. It's basically a hedge fund um, with multiple people involved. Um, had swap agreements across Wall Street with all sorts of different prime brokers, whether it's Go uh, Goldman Sachs, whether it's Morgan Stanley, whether it's uh, Credit Suisse, which, as Jim just mentioned, may have significant losses, whether it's Nomura, and on and on. And none of them seem to have an understanding of exactly how large the positions were at the other firms. And so red flag, red flag. I don't have a flag, but it's a red flag there on really highlighting on the the capabilities of like, ooh, Goldman didn't know on how much Credit Suisse gave them or so forth. Like this is the I, I don't understand like the lack of due diligence here or just the oh okay he said there's no involvement so we're just gonna go ahead and do it like um yeah WAP basically gives a derivative the, the the stock is held in the street name but the derivative that's tied to it gives the economic value to the owner there and so Arcagos had well now we know perhaps as much as fifteen percent or more ownership uh, economically of Discovery and Viacom, those numbers are just astronomic. And apparently buying them all through, the main reason we, they may have moved up to the levels that they did, and then having been thrown as Viacom proceeded to do that offering. So this is really unlike, hey, it wasn't just on Discovery or whatever making these fantastic series or whatever on what the stock has moved up because this is why this is what happens when uh, there's a disconnect between the story of the company and the stock. Uh, like th there are some rhyme or reasons like Tesla kind of gets ahead of the, the, the story, gets ahead of the stock, but the both of them are just kind of traded on like really insane levels. GME is another in ca case, AMC is another case, and we can just go down the list. But like, well, let's, let's talk about like discovery. Like you're talking about discovery was has done nothing for years, trading around 25, 30 bucks. 
and then in just the last two or three months it has skyrocketed into literally the most perfect momentum uh trade ever uh and just, let's just just we'll look at the chart here early like last David week some stuff at 85 dollars a share and the stock suffering that may have started this cascade where the selling began and by the way it's not just owning it on swap where there's no transparency and nobody at any nobody really knows including the companies who their true owners are it's also the leverage being provided by the prime brokers jim five maybe as much as seven times and that's where we are right now and this may not be over i've heard from numerous people this morning that wells fargo may be shopping a large block of viacom as well and so we'll see they did the 45 million last night at what was it 47 i think it was but there may be more downside here. We'll have to wait and see. But this has been a fascinating story, Jim, both from the lack of transparency, the leverage that was being used, and the size. Nobody knows exactly what this guy who runs Archegos was thinking. It, well, it, it, perfect right then and there. That is the, the, the nuts and kabibbles of this story on the sense of like, hey, this individual, we have – God's green earth. We have no idea what this individual has was trading, what he was thinking, uh, what his thought process was. Uh, it just really let's kind of just jump into the screen here, and we can look at uh, uh, discovery here first. Of course, look at this. Uh, let's kind of zoom out on a monthly chart. Of course, we talked about this one on the live stream last night. If you haven't, you weren't tuned in. This was doing next to nothing for quite some time, and then just out of nowhere, like halfway into the pandemic like discovery starts taking off like very strange again very eerie i've talked about it a couple times here um but had no idea like I, what was the underlying reasoning behind this beautiful move here like this just has been a very aggressive chart holding that five and eight moving averages and just continue to climb going up to nearly 80 dollars okay um and just what is that uh from the and uh, the beginning of November of last year to basically the high uh, just a couple days ago, it trumped, it trumped, it went up 308% basically in 142 days, right? That's, that's absolutely insane. And what was the main driver behind it? These swaps. So these swaps are these derivatives. Um, like it's not like it's actually trading stock. It's the... Prime brokers, Goldman, JP, uh, Credit Suisse, and the other Japanese one uh, that create these special leverage derivatives that's outside the market that gives the investor or this family fund the ability to leverage up five or seven times of like, okay, let's say I owned a hundred stock, like a, like a, you do a call option, you buy one call option, you're basically owning a hundred shares. Imagine this like on steroids um, and just blasting it again. I can't say, I can't, like, History continuously repeats, repeats, repeats. Uh, it, it does rhyme, but it repeats so many times when you have the human greed and just the the access or the capable of just getting all this leverage in your hand and just using it. Um, uh, it, it. I hate to sound like a like an imbecile here, but it's more coming down to like, uh, has no one read the comic books? Like, hey, with great power comes... <laughs> great responsibility like there's there's no <laughs> everyone's just like it's a party hey here's some leverage here you go like you know what you know this guy here's uh here's some leverage your way oh you want some uh derivatives as well boom here we go let's have some more leverage let's let's have a party and i'll meet you on friday for their leverage pizza party coming up um but what happens here again who's who's okay in these swaps like like, how can you, like, these derivatives, like, I really didn't know that these derivatives came from that. Like, I, I can go to Goldman if I have the capital, if I had $10 billion, and I'd be like, hey, Goldman, I want to create a derivative for GameStop stock, and I want to be leveraged 3x on that. It's probably, they're going to say no at this point now, but I want to create, uh, imagine that GameStop uh, levered uh, swaps from that, again, and going back to every other bank from that point. And I, 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 this is really the, hey, is this the canary in the coal mine kind of scenario where are there more going to be coming out or is there going to be a, a larger swath of flooding 
and just seeing more funds kind of go kaput like this um, due to the fact of being over leveraged. Of course, we've seen a fantastic, uh, basically the November to December timeframe was absolutely astronomical into January. Um, but we are seeing a lot of chop, 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 especially in the market here. So I wanna be very careful on that one and really highlighting this. Looking here strictly at discovery here, um, we are coming into some initial support around $40. Um, the stock very much being down again. We talked about it going up 300% in about 147 days. Guess how long it took to basically cut that, that whole position in half? It took about seven days to cut 55% in half, the 50, 55% in seven days. That's insane. Um, basically cutting it right where it was at the beginning uh, of February. And it's very much damaged. It's a falling knife. I, I wanna be very understanding. I, I, this, this comes down to uh, the stock getting way ahead of the story. Uh, another one that we can look at is Baidu. Of course, this one was also levered. This one's not as extremely uh, a downtick, but again, around the February timeframe, we've seen this kind of shrink down here, uh, only about 30%. Uh, from its high and mid of February, but again, that could be due to a smorgasbord, sorry, 50% here on this down tick here as well. That's gonna be pretty aggressive here, but this is uh, not as large as position as Discovery and the Viacom. So we look at the Viacom, uh, Viacom, is it so Viacom CBS, uh, whatever. Um, this is just, uh, a f this is literally the, the, the metaphor where people say, oh, it's a staircase up and an elevator down. That's exactly, uh, you should just show people this chart when they're like, hey, what, what's the metaphor, Ken, about uh, that people always say like uh, stocks always like staircase up and an elevator down? This right here. Um, and I, I feel terrible for the people who are investing in this. Like uh, how many people were destroyed or hurt by this? Like if they had 20, 10 percent of their portfolio in this and they bought up again, I've been hurt in the market many, many times and I still get hurt in the market. But. I, I am a little careful about this because I know that these scenarios can happen. Are they very likely? Not really. This is they're titling this, this as like once in a decade kind of margin call, which I, I kind of call that BS. This this is uh, we've seen multiple funds fail in the last year uh, being over levered because it's, it's not like they pick the wrong stocks and they just close the door. That does happen. It's usually they shoot for the stars and they get shot <laughs> doing so uh, and, and really just uh, burn up uh, in very massive, uh, uh, disgusting, aggressive ways. Um, so with Viacom kind of coming initially some support here around 45, but uh, yeah, that's still a very steep falling knife and I really don't wanna be touching any of these stocks with a 10 foot pole. So be very careful out there on your position sizing, looking at these stocks uh, and allocating uh, plans to it. So we always talk about creating a plan when you enter a stock that by creating a plan is you're going to be willing to enter at this price. You're going to be looking for targets uh, at this and this, and then of course a stop loss. And then like a what if scenario on if, and if, if the S hits the F, you have to kind of uh, uh, really uh, put some really uh, strict guidelines in those premises. And of course, really coming down to, uh, your size of your account. Uh, don't over leverage your account. Don't add very large uh, trades and just YOLO things. Again, that's very much uh, the ongoing thesis here. So on that note, I hopefully this was educational and you learned something. If you have, please hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. All right, guys. Peace.